Hey everyone, it's Owen here from OTEC and I'm finally making another video because I have a lot of free time these days as you guys might know well pretty much everyone in the world has so much free time these days so I decided to make another video finally and here it is it's gonna be about the GTX 480 now this is a GTX 480 that I G just recently picked up on eBay for a pretty great deal because the seller listed it as new but it came in a used box and well, the card itself was pretty beat up with dust and stuff, but I cleaned it up and now it looks pretty decent. Anyways, I wanted to talk about how cool this card was back when it was launched. A lot of people remember this card not in a good light because this was dubbed the Furnace graphics card. Because this is based on the Fermi architecture and it has the GF100 chip, which was back then one of the largest, if not the largest, graphics chip ever made by NVIDIA. And that chip really doesn't have a good reputation and as you might see on the design of the card itself well this card is made for barbecues because this thing gets really hot like extremely hot this was way before the r9290 fiasco with amd where everyone's complaining about it hitting 90 degrees well this thing is hitting 96 degrees out of the factory well that's all because nvidia tried to shove over 200 watts of power consumption on this card which uh you know, as you can see, a single, blow single blower fan. And with old technology cooling systems, which still uses heat pipes on a lateral heat sink on a blower card like this. So yeah, it wasn't great. <laughs> it didn't dissipate heat that well. And maybe they, they tried to help the heat dissipation by putting this, you know, like metal fins-ish on top of it. But everyone just made fun of it because it looks like a barbecue. And well, truth be told, you could probably barbecue stuff on it if you tried because this thing gets super hot. Or maybe with below 100 degrees, you could only sous vide it? I have no idea. Anyways, um, as you can see, the card itself looks pretty sleek, actually. And I think I do really like the classic looks of this card. This is one of the nicer looking cards, especially compared to the GTX 580 that came after this card, which is super boring looking, which is, you know, just using a plain plastic cover. This has a metal, like metal pieces of the cooler exposed as well as the heat pipe sticking out, which kind of looks like a hot rod type of car of design. And, well, it's, even though it has just one a single blower fan, it does have two sides to suck in air, because, you know, like back then, they actually cut out the PCBs for airflow for the fans, because SLI used to be a very huge thing, which, speaking of things, it does have SLI fingers up top. Although, the placement kind of confuses me a little bit, because this is right over the vents for hot air over here. So if you put SLI graphics card of GTX 480s, like, which is a terrible idea because you'll just basically melt down your whole whole house with this thing, considering how hot it gets, uh, it'll get even hotter because the SLI fingers and the bridges will basically close up the vents over here, which will not help the situation at all. And if you can also see that this also has this rubber strip on here, which is also, again, meant for SLI setups to space out the cards when you put them on top of each other so they don't sag down and cover up the fan holes completely on the front. Again, this was back in a different time when SLI was still a thing that NVIDIA is pursuing instead of these days where, you know, no one is really pursuing multi-GPU technologies, neither NVIDIA nor AMD, with AMD dropping Crossfire support completely on their new cards and NVIDIA only supporting two-way SLI, and that's even iffy support at best. Anyways, other cool things about this card, compared to, you know, talking about SLI and the new stuff and problems like that, is that this card was launched in 2010. I think it was in March of 2010. It was meant to compete with AMD uh, and beating them, you know, with the HD5870, which they had back then. I, th I have one of those cards inside here, and I might do a video of that as well. Well, this card beat it, right? Uh, like, for sure, it beat it out by quite a big margin. It even, I think, beat out the 5970, which is the dual GPU 5870X2, basically, card from AMD back then. But it does so at a searing hot 96 degrees and uh, over 200 watts of power consumption, which is quite massive, especially back in the day before, you know, we see high power consumption cards, where, you know, now RTX 2080s are over 200 watts and no one bats an eye because, well, cooling technologies has come quite a long way. It's just back then, it wasn't right to, you know, launch an over 200 watt TDP card right out of the box with cooling technologies like this. Anyways, even though it beat the 5870, lots of people criti criti criticize it uh, 
because it does have a very loud fan noise as well as the high temperature so not a lot of people really like it and the funny thing is is that even before AMD countered it with a card that's faster than this Nvidia already replaced it with the GTX 580 because of how bad the situation is with this card with the GTX 580 they launched the new GF110 car, uh, chip on it, which is meant to reduce power consumption and increase performance as well. And that was even before AMD launched the 6970, which I have somewhere here, over here, the 6970, which is, you know, faster than the 480. This is meant to be the 480, but AMD was kind of late in this thing, and Nvidia beat it out by launching the GTX 580 before it. But that's kind of funny that, that this, didn't really have a competition in terms of pure performance before the 6970, but they launched the 580 anyways because this thing was kind of a disaster in terms of PR because of the Fermi, Fermi architecture being a furnace as a joke it is that went back then. But yeah, even though it beat the performance, it was just kind of an unlivable card for the reference one for most people. And I've tried this card already. I've replaced the thermal paste with a good Noxua thermal paste and I've run it in a system and it does get quite hot, but if you run the fan speed high enough, it'll drop down to like 70-ish, no problem stock speeds, but it still got, gets quite hot if you leave it at auto, just like the older views does show. Uh, the thing is that this thing got so hot, Nvidia didn't even launch this card with a full GF100 chip, that is the Fermi chip that's in this card because the GF100 has 512 CUDA cores in it, but the GTX 480 only got the GF100 chip with 480 CUDA cores, which makes this kind of like the Vega 56 or Vega 64 in kind, kind of terms of naming, because, you know, GTX 480, 480 cores. That's how it goes. Well, the funny thing is that somehow, like, after all these times, suddenly in 2020, there's been also reports that the GTX 480 512 core edition was found in China and some websites uh, running it. I kind of forgot who they are, but I'll link them down below if I find them. But apparently it only increases the performance by about 6%, but the power consumption exploded by over 190 watts. So that makes sense why Nvidia didn't launch this thing with a full chip. But it's also kind of show, goes to show how power hungry this Fermi architecture was that Nvidia didn't even launch it with a full core on a flagship tier card which is, you know, they disabled one SM unit to reduce the core count and reduce power consumption. And that's still, I think, not enough because this thing is still quite a barbecue. And, well, conveniently placed barbecue grill on top of it. But, anyways, I think that's all I have to say that's pretty cool about this card. Well, one thing I have to say is that with the display outputs, you can see that back then, if you wanted to run triple monitors, you... I think, as far as I know, you actually can't run it off of one card. So if you, in the case of running triple monitors back then, you actually have to run two cards. So I guess that's why SLI was such a big thing as well. That's, that was one of the things when triple monitor gaming was all the rage back then. But yeah, this is a EVGA card. So you have the EVGA sticker. It's a reference card. So I think beneath this, there should be an NVIDIA GeForce logo or something. Just like the old GeForce logo is over here, way before the RGB or even LED trends. This is just a, like a silk screen printed GeForce logo on the top. Overall, I think the card actually looks pretty cool. It's a classic design. I think it doesn't really look old. It looks pretty sick with the heat pipe sticking out, in fact. But yeah, this wasn't that great of a card for a GTX 480 because of the aforementioned heat issues and earning it the furnace uh, nickname. But that's it for this episode of looking at old hardware. Maybe I'll title it something like old school cool or something like that i don't know i'll see what i'll end up naming it but anyways thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the video and if you do please leave a like and please click subscribe to see more of my future videos and if you have an idea of what kind of cool old hardware i should take a look at and discuss about uh, please let me know in the comments um thank you for watching hope you enjoyed the video and that's it for now